hello and welcome to my youtube channel i'm ASD, and i'm here with the first video of my very very long series that i'm planning to make in this video i'm gonna be checking out whether the built-in macro lens in a mobile device does actually reach one-to-one -one macro magnification ratio so if you're interested keep on watching this video mentioned in the intro video and you can have a look at it there by the way the intro video is where I'm going to be collecting all the rest of the videos from this series so if you look at this video you're going to have links to the rest of the videos from this series this is going to be the first one and I'm starting with the most available option which is the built-in macro lens now you know newer mobile devices always have um, an extra lens which is labeled as macro and being a macro photographer of course course I always wonder how powerful is that macro lens is it actually macro is it not so if you want to watch this video and see a more detailed explanation of how to accurately measure the magnification on a mobile device you can have a look at that but I'm just briefly going to remind you the same thing that I keep on saying in pretty much every video about measuring macro magnification that the macro magnification is very much tied to the size of the sensor of the exact device that you're using. I will be using three different mobile devices because I think that that's fair. I mean, I can't just measure the macro lens on one camera and decide whether it's good or not. I'll be checking out a few devices and for each device, I will have to make their own measurements based on the size of the device's sensor. They're not transferable. Like let's say that at one point I reach the macro magnification on this phone, it's not going to be the same on the next phone. So that is important to say. The other important thing to say is that um, uh, macro magnification, the true one-to-one -one macro magnification is achieved when there is a one-to-one -one ratio between image size and real life size. So long story short, what you see in your frame has to match exactly the size of the sensor, which to me is the only way that it can be macro otherwise it's a close-up and i do have a video explaining the differences between macro and close-up but that's it for me by the definition that i go by unless you're achieving one-to-one -one magnification ratio you haven't quite reached the macro realm everything before that is a close-up and not a macro okay enough talking let's move on to measuring the first phone that I'm going to use is the Moto G Fast by Motorola, released in June 2020. Yeah, I know, not very current, but I'm just using what I have. This phone has a main camera of 16 megapixels and a macro camera of 2 megapixels. I'm going to perform my measurements as usual using a ruler. First off, I'm going to take a couple of shots with the main camera and then I'm going to move on to the macro camera. I'm trying to fit in as much as I can while still keeping the focus. Here are the photos. The first one with the main camera wasn't exactly sharp. I was pushing it a little bit here. So I backed up a little bit and I took another one from a bit further and it appears to be a bit more in focus. I did the same thing with the macro camera. I took two shots where the second one is a bit more in focus because that was a little bit further away. Now that I know how much I can fit in the frame, it is time to look up the size of the sensor and see how close do I come to achieving the true one-to-one -one macro magnification. After a bit of research, I can see that the format of the sensor of the Moto G Fast is 1-2.8 inches. I'm going to look at the reference chart that I have on my website and see that this form format actually falls between the sensor widths 4.96 mm and 5.33 mm. Now, all of this information could have been relevant if I was using the main camera on the phone. But when it comes to mobile phones, each camera has a set of its own lens and sensor. And the sets usually vary in size. So the chances are that the size of the sensor of the macro camera is different than the size of the main camera. But finding the sensor format of the main camera is pretty challenging, so can you imagine how difficult it is to find the sensor format for the macro camera specifically? 
Thankfully, what I can do is to look up the pixel size of each individual pixel in the macro camera sensor, which is measured in microns, and I kind of like microns. Um, and then once I have the pixel size, I am just going to multiply it by the pixel width of the image, and that will give me the actual width of the sensor in millimeters which for the Moto G Fast is 2.8 millimeters width. I know, that sounds super small, but just keep in mind that there are much, much smaller camera sensors out there. Now, since the sensor size is 2.8 millimeters wide, but what I was able to fit in the frame when using the macro camera was around 55 millimeters, I can safely say that the built-in macro camera lens on the Moto G Fast most definitely does not reach the true 1 to 1 magnification ratio. So, let's move on. The second phone that I have is the Samsung Galaxy A12 with a release date of December 2020. Its main camera used in regular mode is 12 megapixels. It can go higher but regular mode is 12 megapixels and the macro camera is once again just 2 megapixels. I'm going to continue taking photos of the ruler first using the main camera in regular mode and then moving on to the macro camera. Let's have a better look at the photos kind of the same thing going on, just testing how much I can fit in the frame before I lose the focus. Now I tried looking up the macro camera, the pixel size or any other useful specs for this phone that I can use in order to figure out how big the sensor size is of the macro lens, but I wasn't able to find any useful information. So I'm going to have to guesstimate the size of the macro sensor and I'm gonna place it anywhere between 2.8 and 6 millimeters. And in this case, the exact size doesn't exactly matter because what I was able to fit in the frame was 38 millimeters. And once again, there is no true one-to-one -one macro magnification. Now the final phone that I have here for testing is the Moto G 205G by Motorola with a release date of December 2021. Uh, by the way, I don't own this phone. Its main camera when used in regular mode is 12 megapixels, but it can also be used in 108 megapixels mode or something like that, like big number. Uh, the macro lens in this camera is actually, check this out, the astonishing 13 megapixels. Now that actually sounds promising. Even while taking the measurements, I got much closer than I expected. So I had to switch the way I was holding the phone. Here are the photos and I'm sure that you can already see a big difference in the sharpness but also how much closer I was able to get so I actually get less in the frame and that is the goal. So looking up the pixel size I found a bit of conflicting information but the more accurate one seems to be that the pixel size of the macro sensor is 1.12 microns which I will multiply by the width of the image and that means that the sensor of the macro camera is 4.7 millimeters. With this phone I was definitely able to get closer, I can already see this and just the sharpness is just so much nicer, but unfortunately I still didn't quite reach the true 1 to 1 macro magnification ratio. And one final thing that I want to go over quickly is the resolution of the images. Here are the photos taken with the Moto G Fast. The photo taken with the regular camera is nearly 16 megapixels, while the one taken with the macro lens is only 2 megapixels. So I'm going to place the smaller 2 megapixel image over the 16 megapixel image so you can see just how much smaller it actually is. Not only that it's smaller in resolution, but also more fits in the frame. So in theory, if I was to crop out the bigger image, I would get better results. But please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that you should crop the image. You mustn't crop the images when taking macro shots and especially when measuring the magnification. But what I am saying is this, 
If the macro camera cannot give you better results than a hypothetical digital crop, then what is the point of having it at all? If it is there, it should be for the purpose of giving you better results so that the thought of cropping won't even cross your mind. Now, same sort of thing is happening with the photos taken with the Samsung Galaxy A12, apart from maybe a tiny bit less in the shots taken with the macro camera. But now, here is the good part. When looking at the photos taken with the Moto G200, what's happening is that not only that the image taken with the macro camera isn't smaller, but it is actually slightly bigger in resolution, so I can place the image from the main regular camera on top of it. Now, this is what makes having a macro camera useful and practical. You should never have to sacrifice image quality for getting closer or magnification, which in this case is not even existing magnification because they're only close-ups and not macro shots. I just wanted to include that because it is something to watch out for when using many built-in macro lenses. But I am glad that there are phones out there just like the Moto G200 where this is no longer an issue. So as of today, unfortunately, none of those macro lenses were able to achieve a true one-to-one -one macro magnification. Not even close, unfortunately, but on the bright side, you can see by the release date that the newest phone was actually able to get me closer to my goal. I was able to fit in less in the frame with the newer phone. So that makes me think that probably in a while, maybe in a few years from now, things are going to be, well, it's a long way to go. So let's not say a few years from now, but who knows? Actually, my point is that in a couple of years, I'm thinking of performing this check again with a uh, another few phones and uh, hopefully we're gonna have different results or maybe maybe not but either way I'm gonna perform this check and we'll see how things go thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time bye for now